and welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, rate, review, and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We want to hear your thoughts on the movies and shows we review. Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel, and we will read them during the show. Or reach out to us on social media. We love talking all things entertainment and pop culture with you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Delora, Delora, new week, new stuff to talk about in these pop culture streets. How's everything in your world? Things are going, you know, things are heavy. Praying for my family again, um, praying for my cousins. <laughs> we had another loss in our family. So praying for the Brickens family. Love you, Uncle Joe. But God is good thankful for his grace and his mercies that are new every morning (laughs) amen hallelujah definitely keeping your family lifted in positive thoughts and prayers and i'm sure recap nation is right there with me so we have a new review that we wanted to read and give a shout out to on the mic we've been requesting it we yes. so appreciate you guys for it's, dropping this on Apple Podcasts. It's the first one of the year, Ashley. First one of the year, right in time for fall. We appreciate it. This one comes from Aswan1990, five-star review, title like having a girl's night. I recently started listening to recapping and now I'm itching to hear the latest from Delora and Ashley. I love to hear their spins and opinions on the latest pop culture news and have enjoyed getting caught up on shows, movies, and music featured in their episodes. Listening to these two is like sitting in on a chat with my girl gang. Thank Yay, you. Uh, that's made exactly us so, what we hope for. Yes, made us so happy to get some feedback and also to know that you know, we're giving you guys something that you're enjoying and valuing and, you know, getting tidbits from because that's what we love. And that's what we want is to be those girlfriends that you can come to and talk a little shit and watch a little TV and watch some movies and enjoy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So guys, please feel free to keep them coming. But thank you so much for this review. All right, Delora, we have a few things to discuss this week. So let's dive in with our first headline. Carrie Washington, she's out here on a promo press tour for her memoir that just dropped this week, Thicker Than Water. I actually just finished her interview that she did on Jay Shetty's pod, but she did a Breakfast Club interview. She's been on GMA. She's been all over the place. And she has dropped many bombshells about her personal life throughout you know her press tour so far I think Carrie Washington is one of those celebrities that's always been ultra private absolutely so to get so much has been exciting to me personally because I'm a big fan (laughs) same and you know what's so funny is the fact that her original book deal was supposed to be how her character Olivia Pope changed her life right and so to me I'm like yeah that sounds like the type of book deal that she would sign up for because she is not giving us any tea like none uh, outside of knowing that you know she was engaged and then to that white man and they broke up and then she got married to her husband and that's about it and she has had two children the only thing I really knew about her was um, her her father who loves to give a good dad joke and that's about it. So yeah, she's yeah. definitely getting personal in this in this book. Very. She's given breadcrumbs, purely breadcrumbs, and usually not even coming from her. It'll just be, oh, we see you pop up, and this is my husband. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm like it's never been a thing. So to your point, she talked about in the Jay Shetty interview about her original 
book deal and how that just felt so dishonest when she started to write it. So that's why she ended up going in this direction because the biggest catalyst for a lot of this was finding out, you know, five years ago, spoiler alert for anybody who does not want this info, her father is not her biological father. And so that really Mm -hmm. was a huge moment for herself, her sense of identity, for her family dynamics, because, you know, her parents, honestly, were not planning on revealing this news to her while they were still alive. Um, Her mother mentioned she was going to leave her a note and she was going to leave it for her upon their passing. What is wrong with the boomers? Okay, like, really? (laughs) You going to be completely gone and leave me a note? (laughs) Yeah, she was like, I'm glad that's not how things played out. In her interview with Jay Shetty, guys, I really encourage everybody to listen to it. I have not listened to all her other interviews, but you get such depth about her experiences and how she's worked through and her mental state throughout this and how she's really leaned into um you know compassion and leaned into her different practices like she's a big yogi which I never knew and spent time in India all these various things to help with you know these changes she's gone through and these you know revelations that she's gone through in her life a few other um things that she discussed in her memoir is she talked about panic attacks that she had as a child she talked about sexual abuse that she suffered by a peer she talked about a same-sex relationship she once had she talked about an eating disorder that she went through she revealed that she had an abortion she talks about her wedding um and then the whole situation with her parents and that coming out after she had planned to do know your roots Uh, which was going to dive into their family DNA and genealogy and all of that. So (laughs) yeah, because that was a lot to hear. That was my biggest question whenever I saw her interviews, because I've seen all most of the daytime TV interviews. And so obviously it's much lighter uh, compared to like the deep dive conversations, like with Jay Shetty. And I'm looking at USA Today that answered my question I'm like so why did they decide to tell her shortly after the end of scandal like why now and then it's like yes finding your roots and apparently her father was experiencing panic attacks so that would definitely expedite that particular conversation absolutely I think it's an important conversation um because one in today's world where we're more open talking about women freezing their eggs and even women looking to be mothers independently and going to, you know, sperm banks to begin their motherhood journey. There's always a conversation on the low selection of black sperm. And so to know that black people were participating in this, form of reproductive health in the 70s is something that's fascinating to me because I don't know anybody who's done anything like that um, of that generation and you may not until they're gone sounds like for some people yeah obviously to your point she mentions that too how her parents were ahead of their time because this was experimental at the time. Like you couldn't even get, you know, sperm couldn't even be frozen at that time. That technology did not exist. Right. So Mm. it was just an entirely different process. And obviously we've had much more change in our lifetime so far. So she was talking about how when she relayed the news to her kids, no big deal. You know what I'm saying? Compared to (laughs) everything else that, you know, is kind of available now. Um, she was talking about how, yeah, yeah. Cause some of their parents, it's like, well, they have two moms, they have two dads. They're, they're, uh, went, had a surrogate, you know, all these various ways that we have and see family now that just did not exist at that time. So, but I also love that. It seems like this was such a monumental shift in her family. Yes. In terms of the love that they now have for each other, the communication they now have for each other, the weight she feels like was lifted off her parents' shoulders with getting this secret and this burden off and just on her. I really, really, really enjoyed it. And so now I'm considering going and checking her out on her book tour, which I've never, I know you've checked and gone out on people's book tours, but I have yet to do it. So Yes. And she's actually meeting with uh, Tony Gowen this evening so missed out on that one and yeah, the closest to me will be the Miami book fair and actually I think Jada Pinkett speaks right after her so I was like oh maybe I'll do a two Ooh, for one yeah nice 
And then, yes, speaking of today's technology and day and age, we have Celine Dion, whose twin sons, they were embryos for, I think, close to 10 years before wow. they were utilized and birthed her children. So science is something. I, I know. <laughs> you have people having custody battles now over embryos. You know, Sophia yes. Vergara. And yes, and her ex-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot. But I'm really happy for Carrie. Like, I've always admired her professionally and now that I'm getting this deeper dive in who she is and who she as a person is outside of her characters I'm drawn to her even more so yeah absolutely all right let's move on to a headline that is everywhere so much so that I was like do I even want to talk about this it's doing the absolute most <laughs> It's so overhyped right now, y'all. It's Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. And yes, we knew who Travis Kelsey was we before been knew. this relationship. <laughs> I mean, besides Taylor him Nicole being... put him on the map for black women. <laughs> First of all, I was about to say, like, all these Swifties playing their husbands, talking about, oh, Taylor put him on the map. Like, He's the second highest paid tight end in the NFL. Like he, he won the Super Bowl. <laughs> he hosted SNL. But to speak to his relationships, black girls been knew who he was. Yes. Like Kayla Nicole police. put him on the map for black women. Police. And he loved every moment of it. And because of that, there is controversy on the internet about this shift right and about <laughs> wait, whether wait, wait. or not one of these things are not like the other <laughs> <laughs> literally you see articles with the pictures of the three black women that he's been with gorgeous black women and not you to got... say taylor ain't beautiful but it, they it, it's not math ain't mathing taylor is beautiful for sure. But the fact that people are saying, oh, is this a downgrade? Like, did he downgrade? Like, for one, I don't oh, want to pick no women against that. each other. No. People, people mm -mm. are saying that. And <gasps> check, check the comments. People are saying that, Delora. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing this up. People absolutely are saying, look at Kayla Nicole. Look who you went now. This is a downgrade. Obviously, other people are coming back and saying that doesn't even make sense. Taylor Swift is Taylor Swift, all these things. But I don't even want that conversation bothers me because I don't want to no. pit women against each other in those terms. They no, are the it's prize. Just, <laughs> they yeah, are all the, the prize. women are the prize. It's just more yes. so like he obviously had a type until now, though. He allegedly had a type until now because even Van Ooh. on Higher Learning was upset and like he feels like you know he was just kind of we were just kind of a, a clout thing a little bit and now he feels like Tra Travis is going to get engaged to Taylor Swift um which I don't know I can't speculate you know Taylor oh, has these so really high profile burning hot relationships that fizzle so I don't even want to put yes. any predictions on it well, everyone's saying that it's a PR stunt, especially for Taylor, because the last fling she had since her long-term relationship ended with uh, Joe, the British actor, that weird musician called Maddie Hilly, who is a known problematic person with the things you say about the Black community, <laughs> etc. cetera. Like the, the list actually goes on and on and on. Um that she was just doing some major image control. Image and this control. relationship seems very random to me because Taylor has never been with like a meathead football player before. <laughs> she, Not she a was, meathead. I, I'm teasing. But you understand what I'm trying to say. She's been, a, she's been attracted to her track record. And I am looking at taylorswift.fandom.com oh, a God. list of her ex-boyfriends they oh, are Lord. all they are all the fine and performing arts type so maybe she is switching Thespians. it up because it's like <laughs> and musicians maybe she is probably saying hey you know what are these things aren't like the other let me try something new right 
And he's been shooting his shot publicly. I mean, he's yes. been the one in interviews saying, oh, I tried to see Taylor at her concert to give her a friendship bracelet, but she wouldn't see me. Oh, I put the ball in her court and invited her to a, a match, all of that. So if anything, it's a PR song on his side, which, I mean, touche, because he his jersey sales, according to ESPN.com, who has an entire timeline rundown. That's how you know this is r- ridiculous, that ESPN.com has a rundown on this relationship. His jersey sales have seen a more than 400% increase since this whole spectacle of her showing up at his game and chatting up his mama. And his social media following has, I believe they use the word meteoric, has meteoric gains. So he winning. He He is, he is. But I kind of understand what Van is saying, though, because it's like, it's like a lot of these celebrities, they, on their way up, they hang out with Black folks and Black culture. And then once they hit a certain point, they turn white again. I mean, we've seen it with Miley Cyrus, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Those are the the examples he gave. Yep, those are the examples (laughs) he gave. It's, it's the, it's, honestly a well-known recipe at this point so from him going with the faded beard to just the stash i'm like you know who he's shooting for now you know what i mean <laughs> girl because when he cut that beard i was like who the hell did you just turn into first what of all happened? the way he used to dress when he was with uh his last girl what's her kayla. name again kayla, kayla Nicole. i mean the Swag. fade the the earrings the jewelry Swag. the shoes the clothes i dave was like your mouth is a gape you need to close your mouth i was like first of all we've always known who kelsey was <laughs> okay <laughs> we've always known but <laughs> the other thing dave said he was like taylor got money maybe he's just trying something new because that was a rumor in the last relationship was that he was cheap so <laughs> i mean <laughs> you got chad ocho sink you do got Chad Ocho Cinco up here talking about he's uh he enjoys being a stay at home dad and he ain't signing no prenup. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Travis heard that interview and was like, you know what? Fact, <laughs> I want to be a stay at home dad post career too. But no, I mean obviously, you know, people don't have much else to talk about that this has gotten reached a fever pitch. I feel like even to this extent because this has been everywhere and it's quite overwhelming but i have to say we don't I, even know what's going on with these people like she may have just been all. like sure i'm a pop up why not and she's a global superstar to boot so you know taylor was doing what a lot of girls are trained to do you show up you root for the guy you wear the jersey you talk to his mom <laughs> you know what i mean not just talking uh, they was up there key keying in that box somebody was like people were talking more about taylor swift than the fact that the dolphins scored like what 70 points or something ridiculous um okay so one of the things i wanted to talk about was this uh account called astro twins on instagram i love this video so much because uh, this page they talk about astronomy and then they love talking about celebrity couples and she said that she felt like this news coverage is a bit of a backlash because it's like we are just coming out of the summer of women kicking ass and taking names billion dollar concerts we're talking taylor um we're talking beyonce we're talking barbie and it's like but now you want to you know amplify the fact that she's in the stands you know cheering for the dude on the field where she dominated that entire field by herself for like three hours like you know what I mean uh and I thought that was such an interesting take and I'm not gonna lie I I can see a little bit of that it's like oh let's go back into your place as the girlfriend and not the badass chick that you truly are so just wanted to highlight that I just don't care. Like, if I'm honest with y'all. <laughs> You're like, at the end of the black ass day. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
I'm just going to be honest with y'all. And I know it has sounded like over time that I have hated on Taylor Swift. I will say this again. I have no hate in my heart towards Taylor Swift. I think she is lovely. She's a fantastic songwriter. I recognize her talent, all these things. But I am not a Swifty. This is not this. I don't care. Like, I, I don't care. So wishing y'all both collectively and separately the very best. But let's move on. Because I'm sure she will in a matter of months. Like, that's how I feel about it. They're not going down the aisle. And if they do, I'm going to be like Wendy Williams and I'm going to eat crow. Well, one of his ex-girlfriends, one of the black women, the lovely black woman he dated said, yes. um, you know, good luck to her. Because in my experience, he's not a faithful. Well, so, allegedly, that's what she says. Yes. Yes. And at the end of the day, that's always been my sentiment about athletes musicians yep you know i'd be like i'd be like mj on the kardashians like get y'all an accountant if y'all really trying to make this ish last like get you you know what i'm saying the one who comes home every night somebody who's and be happy to be there yes a little more regular so we'll see what happens but then again like i said i don't care so let's move on to laura wait i'm gonna say like like why does Dave and I work is because he don't be on online he comes home <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got no social media <laughs> get you somebody in health care okay <laughs> oh alright Laura let's move on to a more serious topic that has been you know it's been bubbling out here uh, with uh, these allegations against Russell Brand um I'm pulling up an article from CNN because the UK have opened an investigation. The UK police, I should say, have opened an investigation of sexual offenses against him. So the Sunday Times, the Times and Channel 4's dispatches had published an investigation in which four women alleged Russell Brand of sexually assaulting them in separate incidences between 2006 and 2013. One of the women said she was just 16 and Russell Brand was 31 at the time of the alleged assault in London. So now the London's Metropolitan Police has launched an investigation into what they're saying are non-recent sexual offenses. Russell Brand has you know, denied all these accusations, but they're they're taking it seriously and looking into rape and sexual assault. Delora, this has obviously not gotten nearly the traction of the previous story we were just talking about, but what do you think are the potential implications of this moving forward on Russell Brand and um and you know the the court cases that could come as a result? I I don't know. You know, Russell Brand has been a name that I have not heard in some time. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, To the point where I was surprised to learn that he has a big YouTube channel. Yeah, I was just learning that in this article. mm -hmm, Mm -hmm. And in light of these allegations, the CEO of YouTube uh, demonetized his account until, you know, the court process moves forward. Overall, these are some really ugly allegations. Uh, I was looking at an ET Canada video and apparently Katy Perry has said uh, things about Russell in the past about him being controlling and, you know, uh, he broke up with her over the phone. Over text. And I think she was performing in one of her documentaries. They had a video of her like crying behind the scenes. And then having to go on and perform to find out like your husband just broke up with you. So, you know what? I just, I, I'm always on the side of the people who are filing these charges. And so if these things are true, I hope they find peace and justice in the process. Absolutely. I got to tell you, of a lot of the folks who have been accused of crimes like this, this one does not surprise me. I think that Russell Brand has at least publicly cultivated an image of being extremely, not just crude, but like he makes, has made outrageous jokes and has said outrageous things um, that when you look back on it or when they come to light, it's like, hmm. So you were just basically telling yourself possibly in the form of jokes about your behavior um, if these allegations are in fact true. So 
when I heard it again, I wasn't surprised. I was still very sad because this continual trend of these types of men in positions of power in Hollywood and elsewhere who use that power to abuse women and abuse people um, is sickening every single time. And it just, you know, it just makes me so sad. So to your point, I'm definitely hoping for a resolution for the victims involved. Um, you know, if if all of this comes back and is uh, he's found guilty or however the London and UK process works in their legal system, but definitely hoping for justice where justice is due. So we'll probably have more about this in the future, guys. Delora, let's move on to our final headline of today. I thought, honestly, that we were going to be done talking about Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas for a little bit. But uh, after we hopped off the mic last week, it felt like things just took a sharp turn. <laughs> Real quick. Sophie Turner filed a lawsuit against Joe Jonas for the return of their two children. She basically said that she wanted the kids to return to England. Um, they have a daughter, Willa. And a second daughter who I guess her name has now been released due to this lawsuit, but I don't have that readily available. Um, they were supposed to be meeting to discuss their separation. And then it seems like the situation may have potentially devolved because, you know, again, she wanted them returned to the UK. He's been having the kids in Florida here in the US while he's been touring all of this. And also as a part of this lawsuit, we found out that Sophie is alleging she found out about the divorce through social media. Insanity. Insanity. I'm shocked by that because of that joint statement that they both released yeah. on their social media that must have just been a, sure, we'll go ahead and do this real quick. Let me get this out of the way. If that's not behind the scenes, how things were really going down. Also, it shows that his team was working overtime trying to build that narrative of Sophie being a bad mother, him going out in public to eat with his small children, all doing this and ain't even telling her that it's like, it's over. It's, it. I mean, also looking at the Taylor Swift <laughs> exboyfriends.com. He broke up with Taylor over a 27 second phone call back in the day. So I forgot speaking, all about it. <laughs> speaking of common denominators, it's that not was looking so too specific. Good. That was so specific. That's back how at that petty time. Taylor is too, right? Like she was like, no, you did not. Well, to be honest with you, if I was a guy and I had dated Taylor Swift, she would have some tales about me too. Because let's be honest, like everybody's not emotionally mature in those younger years. And I, I definitely feel like I would have been that person too, where like, you know, you don't always handle things the best. And I just think Taylor has had such a, like a heartfelt approach to all of these things in her music. And so I'm like, yeah, I definitely, if I had been a dude. Back in that time, I would have had a song written about me too. But they're grown now. Like Joe is in his 30s. We grown. This you got kids involved. There's a lot of other factors. This was your wife. So at this point, I would hope that, you know, the way you handle things has changed. So as of we're, you know, talking and recording um today, they have reached a temporary agreement over their children um amid the lawsuit. It looks like staying in New York. So We'll have to see how this ends up shaking out. Something that I thought was going to end up being amicable just shifted totally to acrimonious and I just wasn't ready for it. What they say, bring back the messy celebrity divorces, okay? Nobody cares about unconscious coupling, okay? Uh, <laughs> or what uh, to say, conscious uncoupling, I should say. We are so uh, messy as humans. We are live so messy. for the feel kevin costner's divorce is ugly his young wife is like i live in the lap of luxury and i will maintain this lifestyle i'm like it's the audacity for me i'm like oh what you're not going to do is take my things away i guess i don't know maybe i need some of that what's she drinking ashley 
some level of a water brand that I probably don't even know and whatever else those rich people have <laughs> that we won't have access to in the damn near future. But let me tell you something about that Kevin Costner situation. I am so hard team Kevin because Are you? I am because Kevin Costner lives specially in my heart for his relationship with Whitney Houston. He always will. Yes. But also like, I don't fall hard on the side uh, in divorces of like people being owed a lifestyle yes. based on who their partner was. Like, I understand yes. you want to protect and have things for resources for your kids. So like, yeah, have the kids yeah. tuition paid, those sorts of things. But this lap of luxury, oh, I'm used to living in a state with, you know, maids and service and pools and all these things. That's on you. Yep. That's all on you. I don't male, female, and other. I don't care. I'm I'm not, I fall so strongly on like, I, I you're not entitled because right. we were married for me to keep you in the lifestyle to which you've grown accustomed because of the earnings I've had. Especially if you're not a part of the come up. I think it's different when y'all both start off, started from the bottom, then we hear, you know what I mean? That's well, a different conversation. Well, then in those cases, usually that's why there's no prenup because I, yeah, yes. we, we, start, we started with nothing together. <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay if yeah. you ain't michael jordan's first wife i don't want to hear from you period you know what i'm saying <laughs> but that's just how i feel about that kevin costner because we have not talked about that and i'm always like kevin Ugh. i guess that's what happens when you marry the youngins <laughs> and you get them spoiled and they used to that you know all those videos now of being a house girlfriend and a housewife and all this that's on the come up these you Instagram and TikToks. That's what happens. I no words. No words. But a lot of change is happening with him too. The end of Yellowstone and this relationship. I hope and I he's never okay. even got a chance to get into Yellowstone yet. I'm like, damn, I, I haven't even got into the show yet. And, he, and Kevin's gone. Exactly. But apparently it's a really good show. So yeah, people have raved about it. I will have to get into it someday, but now I know that he's gonna be gone. So <laughs> spoiler. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Dolores, let's get into these hot, hot topics. First one up is the WGA and the studios finally striking a deal to end the WGA strike that went on for 146 days. So I have up an article from the Los Angeles Times to just mention kind of like the big buckets that they were able to hash out in terms of this deal. Higher pay. So they will get a raise in wages, 5% in the first year, 4% in the second year, 3.5% in the third year. And then residual bases and minimums will get increases as well, but lower increases. Streaming, because they were, you know, wanting to get more money back from exactly. the success exactly. of viewership and all of that from streaming and also get the data. They were able to work out because both of those. Netflix has been very sneaky out here hiding all that information. All of them have, though, honestly. Yes, like, true. But they were notorious them have been for shady. it. Yes. Yeah. And so now the writers will receive bonuses based on viewership on streaming services. Um, they will also get the data from the various streaming services. It'll be what is it, how they put it confidential so they'll get confidential viewers viewership metrics for the streaming shows but at least they will receive it right there's also minimum staffing that went into this agreement it sets minimum staffing requirements for tv writers rooms depending on the length of the season so there's a lot of detail about that that they were able to work out and then the last one was ai which as we know is affecting every Huge. industry Huge. Um, but they were basically able to really hash out language that regulates the studio's use of AI and provides flexibility to the guild's members. So I'm really happy to see that all the major deal points that they wanted to have worked out, they were able to get worked out. And from an article I read from Variety that was so in-depth about the logistics of the negotiations, like there was a lot that went on between the heads of the guild and the heads of the studios and all of that over a period of time. And so to all the folks who put in 
the hard work to pick it and to go into these negotiations and do whatever they needed to do. Like, I'm just really happy it worked out in the WGA's favor. I agree. And this strike was a long one. I'm looking at deadline here. It lasted 148 days, but the longest ever was in 1988 for 153 days. So it was knocking on that door. But to what you mentioned before, I was, I'm, it's extremely happy to see that they were able to come to an agreement on those areas again on minimum staffing, streaming, and AI. So, congrats, everybody! Absolutely, I cannot wait to see what their minds will put. You know, put to put to paper and then on screen. Looking forward to it. And obviously, we still have the SAG strike that is still going so that still has yet to be resolved but definitely happy that writers can start putting pen to paper again I saw a um post from Abbott Elementary (laughs) excited and from I think a couple other creatives and folks who were excited obviously about what this means for the industry to hopefully get going again And we'll see and report back on what happens as we learn and see more from the SAG and actors side of their strike. So more to come on that, guys. Um, The first, it looks like, folks who will obviously be back is Late Night. So you have Fallon, Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, John Oliver. All of them will be back by, if not this weekend, Monday. Um, for mm-hmm. all of their shows, they were doing that podcast. The podcast is going to go down now that they're all getting back to work. But I'm sure they were very happy to announce that. And then I don't know if you watched the season premiere of Dancing with the Stars yesterday, but one of the actors who had been had decided to scale back and step back because of the strikes did get a chance to perform and did get a chance to be a part of the the show so and the internet never forgets but somebody was like drew all she had to do was wait out one week yeah i cracked up when you sent that to me because yes (laughs) like you put a stain on your reputation for nothing and She'll all she okay. had to do was wait for one week. Oh my goodness. Be all right. Actually, there's a picture of Taylor and Travis hugged up at a bowling alley. <laughs> I'm done. I'm like, has she ever dated anyone with a fade before? Like, this is these are my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what Taylor be getting into. Does but- she use Watch your best life. Like I don't understand. Like she better at her rich at her rich level. I'm gonna need her to be not using know, her hands in a bar of soap to wash her ass. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. But I'm gonna need y'all to know that that's never been okay. Never wash your legs too. Oh, now I can see that though. I can see her not washing her legs. I'll be honest. Oh I can see that part. Let me stop. All right, guys, let's get into our final hot topic. Delora, the universe, Rock Nation, anybody that has it up, uh, Apple Music, everybody listened to our podcast episode, apparently. They sure did. They're n- fans. <laughs> we have our fingers on the pulse. Okay, well, we are the pulse. How about that? Yeah, there you go. If y'all didn't realize our reach, this is our reach right here because- Delora put out in the universe a few episodes ago that Usher was her bid for the Super Bowl 2024 halftime show. And God damn it, it's Usher, baby. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Announced mm-hmm. on Sunday of this past what week. You wanna say? I woke up to this news. It put an immediate smile on my face and warmth in my heart. I screamed. I screamed. I was like, ah! I should do it for you! Ah! 
how long has this been in the works and y'all have been keeping this from us? Because we talked about the fact of who supposedly was the people that have been rumored. Usher's name was nowhere in that conversation. Nowhere near it. And we were offended by that, actually. We're like, Deeply how offended. Is possible? I said, where are my veterans? Where are my people who have been in this game? This game called music and entertainment who deserve this stage, right? And now that I realize, too, that the Super Bowl is in Vegas, no shit. Exactly. It's like, connect the dots. Of course, it was going to be Usher. Exactly. <laughs> Usher has been killing it with his Vegas residency. Now he's doing a Paris residency, which I'm missing everything. But I love it. I don't even want to know how much those tickets are. Goodness me gracious. either. Shamika, if you've looked, let us know, since you like to go to shows <laughs> abroad, darling. Exactly. Exactly. But girl, the crazy thing too, because I have an article up from People to also listen to the interview he did when he dropped the announcement. So obviously this is capping off his Las Vegas residency. It's the 20th anniversary of Confessions. And oh. also his next album, Coming Home, is dropping the same day as the freaking Super Bowl. February 11th. 2024 kids and they're talking about this is the kickoff to a stadium tour yes. oh my gosh i almost can't handle it <laughs> almost it's almost too much i'm so proud of him i'm so proud of him girl and when he talks about it in this interview that i watched about how this is a milestone that he's had and been wanting for so long that makes so much sense usher is an ultimate entertainer so you yes. look at the folks over the years who have had this opportunity it's like usher should have had this sooner in my opinion mm. usher is a living legend in the game you know <laughs> we had this conversation a couple of years ago when it when it comes to like that class with Beyonce and it was Justin Timberlake and it was Usher and you know Beyonce just blew everybody else in the water because I'm like what happened to Justin and, and Justin fell from grace <laughs> just a little bit hence his reunion with NSYNC well, and don't get me wrong man man in the woods is rough I'm, I mean it man was, in the woods was so rough. rough and then he got called out of his dance moves uh, a couple of years ago he wasn't hitting the boom cat the way he needed to. And honestly, I'm a I'm loving everything in sync right now. Exactly. Like, I everything. watched the Hot Ones interview. I've I watched every too. clip they have available. Every, I'm eating up every interview. Behind the scenes. But you know, Joey and Pepto. Joey was saying that Justin's about to drop an album and probably tour with that first. I'm like, don't do that. You need to capitalize off the hype. That is happening right now. And then then we have Usher. And I'm like, what happened to Usher in the sense of Confessions is multi-platinum. That's when CDs were physically sold. Okay. We're talking hundreds of millions of albums sold. <laughs> okay. It's under my um, TV stand right now. First of all. The way they announced it, doing Baby Usher in the beginning of Confessions and then having all the different people say, uh, put that on everything. Okay, I won't. <laughs> or I will. Uh, the first one I saw was Kim, but the one he did for himself, I'm like, I'm crying. I am crying because this means so much to us. Uh, so much to me and this generation. I'm going to be in tears when he performs. Yeah, I, I guarantee you. Because I'm Are like, you? that was... The year, that year was so big for me in high school. It was everything. I am dating myself. Lord have mercy. Um, Usher is the first person. And this is, I'm, you know, I adore and love Beyonce with all my heart. All my heart. But I've already seen Beyonce in person. Usher is the first person that I looked up to price of them tickets. Because I was like, can I go? Should I go? <laughs> is it even possible to go? Girl, these packages... $8,550 per person. I was going to say for what, 10 people? For one person for this package experience, not even the top tier packages. The top tier packages were already sold out. Okay. 
I don't know who's affording to go to the Super Bowl, but I just want to be y'all friend. That's all. You know, I just want to like, be the friend. You don't want to be the friend with the boat. You just want to be friends with the person who owns the boat. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. Give me the residual life <laughs> on the back end. You know what I'm but, saying? Because I don't want some of them problems that come with that level. Or maybe I do. I've never had it to say. <laughs> but you damn know. sure I can't. I'm not paying eight hundred eight thousand five hundred fifty dollars So I may go to Vegas to be in, to be there. But damn. But, it's going to be a hell of a show. Back to what I was saying when it comes to Usher. I'm like, I don't know what happened and how he lost momentum. So, but I'm glad that he he got this resurgence back from his tiny table to watch this to now. I'm loving every minute of it. That's a good point, though, because people were saying, oh, is Usher the right pick because of relevancy? Like I said, these younger kids, y'all do not put enough respect on legends. And it's really getting to me like there will never be a time where Usher does not deserve to perform at the Super Bowl, in my opinion. He um, still sings. He still dances. He still looks amazing. Like I don't care about who has the tops on the radio right now and, and on the charts. Music today, in my opinion, sucks ass. So y'all can have it. And he has all the hits. Like, they for these kids, it may be elevator music. I don't know. But he has genuine <laughs> hits. Okay. <laughs> They ain't y'all ain't paying the bills yet, most likely anyway. Those of y'all who can't appreciate it ain't paying not a bill yet anyway. So you know what? Well, even when we they were live talking our best about lives. Miley Cyrus, I'm like, does Miley have enough hits? Miley got like four, or does she have more than that? I don't know I don't because know. Miley has had different eras of music, and I haven't true. followed along in all of them. Like That's I catch true. a hit of Miley's every like three years, but I did watch Miley's recent thing she did with Apple, where it was like at her house and she performed a bunch of the songs off her new album. I watched that, yeah. and Miley, Miley is probably my favorite of her generation in terms of like yes. abilities and singing and songwriting and all of that. Like that's just me personally. Demi I Lovato is probably up there really as well vocally. Um. But I, Usher is going to bring down the house. And if you can't appreciate that, I don't think you really know music. That's how strongly I feel about it. Maybe Taylor is using her relationships so she can be the halftime show next year. Because she does have all the hits. I mean, the Eras tour alone. It'll be the conclusion. I'm skipping that one. I'm skipping that year i'm kidding guys i'm kidding I'm but you know i'm trying to think like i know they're gonna try to want to circle it back well let me know in your opinion who you think is going to be joining him for his super bowl performance in 2024 because i have a list alicia keys for my that, boo nope that's the first one i wrote down too go ahead was it <laughs> literally <laughs> alicia keys I was going to say, well, I am, but he already did. Oh my gosh. When the black eyed peas performed for the halftime show already. So the likelihood of him doing it again, I don't, I don't know if it'll happen. Yeah. I did not have him on my list. Interesting. That's my song. Oh my God. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. Mm-hmm. you know, what song that I love that he's not going to perform is good kisser. Whew. I mean, it's 13 and a half minutes it's good kisser is on his vegas residency set list because i did look at that set list so i think he's gonna bring out somebody young he's definitely bringing out little john and Ludacris for yeah that's yep. going to happen a thousand percent yep i think he might i don't think he's gonna bring out summer walker i, I no. think she's, she's too scared for that she has absolutely there's no way <laughs> There's no way Summer's coming out onto the Super Bowl stage. There's no way in the <laughs> hell. And I love Summer Walker. There's no way. She was holding a uh, a toy during her Tiny Desk performance. You know what Did I'm she? saying? Yes. Did she? Yes. Um, that's all I got, genuinely. 
Uh, I you? think Chris, I think Chris Brown, if they have j- truly reconciled, is absolutely coming out. What on songs that stage. do they have again? They have a couple songs, but they Usher has been a feature on them. But I think for yes. the opportunity, for the recognition, for the fact that Chris Brown, if Chris Brown had not had the situations he's had, Chris Brown would have been a Super Bowl performer by now. Let's be honest. Uh, I don't think the, he's gonna do it. You know how conservative the Super Bowl is. I, I think don't Usher see will him abs- bringing out Chris. I can't see it. I think Usher would absolutely bring out Chris Brown. Like you I think-, think Usher is going to use all of his cachet on Christopher Brown. And this is not me hating it, yes. on Chris. I'm just being business minded. I know you are. I think that Usher would absolutely put his, not even, because to me, it's not, but again, I'm a black person and I am not of the same mindset as some people, but I do think that Usher would, he is 10 toes down for Chris from things that I've heard and seen. He looks at him like a brother. Again, if their situations have resolved from whatever happened. Wait, wait, did he punch the him? Skating rink. You remember yeah, that? And the tour bus. That's what I said. If all that has resolved, I do think. <laughs> And I think people, it was Usher a, who threw that party for him. And I think if it's a fantastic performance, I I don't think that that, that Chris Brown is going to be the thing that people are talking about, honestly. Um, so yes, I do think they would. And then I think Justin Bieber is probably going to come out because Justin Bieber is uh, Usher's one of Usher's proteges. Yes, um, but is he really going to bring out Justin? Maybe I think he would. I think yeah, he would. Okay. I, I can see that. I can see the that. relationships. I think Usher has significant relationships with some of these people that would propel him to want to give them and sh- have their opportunity to share the stage with them at this moment, at this height. And then you probably don't agree with this because you keep saying they probably ain't on good terms anymore. But if I could just get a snippet of I Need a Girl, then Diddy's going to come out on stage. If I could just get a snip. <laughs> I need a girl to cry, bye, bye. First I need all, a girl to be my be wife. My- I need a girl that's mine, oh my. That's one of my favorite songs ever. Love that song to this day. So I don't see Diddy. Because again, Diddy has had two, two Lifetime Achievement Awards. Where was Usher? Nowhere. I know. I said you wasn't going to do it. Diddy would do it for himself, of course, to play the Super Bowl. So it's all about power dynamics for sure. And then my Uh, last one. Okay. is potentially for real like i feel like oh yeah the level i love that of relationship and music that they have together i could totally see for real stepping out absolutely i can see that after the night boom boom, boom. don't leave the girl around me true player for real that's my nigga for real uh love it i'm so excited y'all don't understand uh, don't call me don't text me. My phone will not be available during the Super Bowl halftime performance. <laughs> Everybody I am not looking down. Talking about, oh, he wants uh, to bring out Beyonce. I'm like, Beyonce ain't hitting that stage for one song for nobody. Right. There's some out to bring her bring her out for what? Naughty Girl? Naughty no. Girl. Bad Girl. Oh, wait. Naughty Girl's bad her girl. song. Yeah. Right. I need a bad girl. Yeah. Get I do love that girl. song. But Beyonce Ooh, but is Beyonce. Baby. Exactly. everybody's talking about how she brought out Megan Thee Stallion as a feature on her own song you know what I'm saying like <laughs> it's Beyonce let's not that let's had not me rolling that had me rolling it's like yeah. you're the feature Beyonce but here's Megan Thee Stallion <laughs> yeah. and that's what I think Usher would do to Chris Brown I should be like you can come on out but this is your song but you know it's my halftime <laughs> performance so exactly what do you want me to say and so those were the major has ones for me. Large shoes to fill because Rihanna's visual halftime show this year was a one, a one, visually stunning. Now he's going to do a lot more, obviously physically compared to Rihanna, so that should be interesting as well. So oh, it's going to be a spectacular show, especially because of the hype of the residencies he's done and this incorporation of skating. And I heard they're saying he's even going to have some stripper poles out there and make it, you know, make it a show. So I have no doubt. I have full confidence that Usher's halftime performance is going to be one for the books. Like it's going to be my top five. Like I'm already he, putting it out entertainer. there. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else, Delora, before we get out of here? I'm just so proud of him. 
I'm sorry. And I can't <laughs> wait. And we called it. We called it. We called it. We called it. When nobody was talking about Usher, we were talking about it. You got to gloat when you get it, when you have the, the opportunity yeah. to, you know. Thank you, Jay-Z and Rock Nation for your support of <laughs> recapping with Dora and Ashley. We appreciate it. Exactly. <laughs> we look forward to seeing the funds coming in very soon. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Delora, what are we bringing to the people for our next recap next week? We are doing a throwback to one of my all time favorite films. I'm just going to quote one of my favorite lines just breathe. <laughs> we are talking <laughs> about 1998's Ever After, starring Drew Barrymore, Angelica Houston. It's going to be, it's going to be nice and sweet and cozy it's one of my favorite movies to watch this time of year they people talk about comfort food this is my comfort entertainment so join us cannot wait for another throwback to also my favorite film adaptation of cinderella showing drew barrymore a little bit of love after all the (laughs) (laughs) one week if she had waited one more week All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. But as always, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Please leave us a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We so appreciate it. Share this episode out with your friends, family, loved ones. We cannot wait to talk to you next time. If you have not already listened to our In Conversation with Travis Halton, be sure to do so. That dropped this week as well. Yes, so good. And as always, in the meantime, guys, be blessed. Bye.